we have a, a, a I'm going to call them up in twos and they're going to share uh, a little bit of different all the way through and uh, Noble's going to close it out for us or he's going to be our last speaker but I'm going to start with Halela Halela if you'll come up and then Alex y'all both come up Halela you're going to you're going to you're going to lead us off yes 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 so this is Halela, and she is a firecracker. She has no problem praising God. She doesn't care who's around. She will run around the church. She don't care if nobody else is running around church. She's going to do it. If she feels like God, she did do it. That's right. <laughs> did do it, yes. uh, she's not worried about who's watching her. She's here to praise Jesus. And uh, if you want a little taste of what she's got, she says, come on with me, and you can have it too. And so she's going to share uh, just a little bit of her testimony from a little bit before Deeper Youth Camp, through Deeper Youth Camp, and into where she is right now. So, Halela, here you go. Hold on. We practice this all weekend. All right. Good morning. Um, like Winston said, I'm going to share a little bit about my experience with camp. But I want to start off by saying God works in funny ways. This past week, um, me and my friend... We don't really hang out. I just go to school with her. Um, we randomly decided to go eat Chinese food, just out of nowhere. And I had this feeling like I needed to pray for her. And I had no idea what was going on in her life. None. And I laid hands on her, and we prayed in the booth at the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and um, after I dropped her off at home, I was like, man, camp has really changed me. Like... And then as soon as I had that thought, Ansley called me. She's like, do you want to speak about Camp Sunday? I'm like, yeah, I do. And so I wanted to start by saying that. And um, I would also like to share about the months leading up to camp. I was, felt very alone in the world. I had like this need to be something or I was craving something. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't figure it out. And I was doing um, teenage things that I shouldn't be doing. And um, the night before camp, we were at Miss Mandy's Estes house, and I was like, "Man, I really want to go home. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go all the way to Panama, <laughs> and with people like I've never met before. Like, what am I doing?" I was like, "You know what? No, I'm gonna go." And that decision drastically changed my life. I, um, I'm so much more happier. I have a family, like y'all all my family, and I thank y'all so much for opening arms. Um, I no longer feel alone. Um, and um, I think that if you're on the fence about whether or not, if you're even watching about going to camp, and you think, I don't wanna go to camp, I wanna enjoy my summer, like I'm in high school. Let me tell you something. It does not matter if you're in high school. It doesn't matter if you're an adult and you want to be like, I want to be a chaperone. We are living for God. We are not living for ourselves. And um, if you live in the flesh, you'll experience the flesh. You'll not experience um, the spirit moving inside of you, um, the amazing feeling that you get when you're praying with people and worshiping God and running around the church. And... Um, something I'm going to leave y'all with is what Pastor Matt said this weekend. He said, press closer to God because he is eager to receive you. Thank you. Thank you, Halela. Thank you, Halela. And uh, you're going to get the opportunity to press closer to God today before it's over with, I promise you. I promise you. So this is Alex. Alex had some obligations this weekend, so he wasn't able to go. Uh, but he... He shared a devotional with our youth group a few weeks ago that I believe is really good. I know this was personal for him. It was good for me. And uh, so I just asked him if he would just share uh, what he shared uh, with the youth a couple weeks ago. It's really good. Uh, so, Alex, the floor is yours. So, like you said, I had some things going on this weekend. And of all the weekends, I missed probably the most exciting content. Oh, well. Um, so something I want to go ahead and say is this is a devotion about habits. And so I got really into trying to start over on a couple of habits that I had. And I found out there's this thing called the 2190 rule. It takes 21 days to form a habit. It takes 90 days to apply it. And it takes even longer to break a habit. 
which I found is really interesting, the 21 part, because we do 21 days of fasting every year. Um, but I can definitely relate to the struggle of breaking habits, like, for example, lying to myself. I need to understand it's okay to be 16 and still have to use the step stool. <laughs> um, uh, but, so... Uh, but in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it said that no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted. And that's some proof that we can't really do it on our own, but he's right next to us because he is stronger than mankind. Um, but even so, we find ourselves thinking, oh, it's okay to do it again. Just one more time, I know. I mean, I've done so well not doing it. What's gonna hurt one more time? In actuality, it's just gonna start you all over. But God gives us a couple tools to resist it. Um, the first tool he mentions in Philippians 4.13, uh, when he says, I can do all things in Christ, um, he gives us strength to do things that we can't really do on our own, and that's the strength that we need, just like I need a step stool. Um, the second tool he tells us is actually in 1025, uh, Hebrews 10.25. Um, can't read it if I don't know it. Um, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up or not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And that's where he's telling us, he gives us friends or family to stand by us. We don't have to even, like these guys, I don't have to say anything. They don't have to know what's going on. Just being near them helps me through some things. And so he gives us strength, but he also gives us friends that give us that strength. That's right. But he also wants us to be the strength for others. That's right. yes. So, that's all I got. Yes, thank you, Alex. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, Alex has really, really grown a lot in the last three or four months. It's been, it's been really nice to see. It's been a blessing to be around. Um, and I'm, I'm going to call up I think I'd have it memorized now. I've looked at enough. Alani and Angel. Alani and Angel. Yeah. Come on up. <clears throat> so Alani, you're first. Alani, she's going to share a little bit of her testimony about Contend this weekend, but really just some struggles that she's had going into Contend through life and, and really going to hone in on prayer. And I'm excited to hear what she's got. It's going to be really good. Good morning, everybody. Um, like Winston said, my name is Alani, and I've been coming to the river for about four or five months now. And I really just wanted to touch on um, the importance, and not only the importance, but the power of prayer. So from a very young age, my mom has always made sure that you know we know how to pray, we know how to give thanks for everything that God has provided for us, and even the things that he's still working on behind the scenes, things that we don't see just yet. Um, a little story, I guess. Um, when I was about six years old, my mom, sister, brother, and I, we used to ride around in um, a little neighborhood outside of Lake Charles, and we used to pray over these houses in the car. At six years old, I was just going with what my mother told me I had to do. And we would just pray over these houses and stand firm and believe that one day we would live in a nice neighborhood in a beautiful house. And about two years later, after constantly praying and praying and praying, we received a house in the exact neighborhood that we would ride around in. <laughs> and then 
um, now six years later, we um, had just bought our first home. So that is just a little bit of how I've seen prayer work in my life. But during this weekend, I was going into this weekend very open, like Winston had said we should do. And um, prayer has always been very important for me. I've always stand, um, I've always stood firm in what I've believed in and um, thanking God for everything that he's given us. And in John 14, 13, it says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. Um, that scripture really resonates with me simply because this weekend was something new, something I've never felt before. I can't really explain it, but... Um, a moment during this weekend, we were sitting at the altar, praying and worshiping, and um, I was just moved to touch and pray over Malia. Um, I'd known, not to go too much into detail, but I'd known Malia had, had something wrong with her back, and um, just being obedient, and even though I was nervous and I didn't really know what to say or what to pray for exactly, um, I just laid hands on Malia, and I stood in firm believement and agreement with Malia that her back would be healed, and we prayed, and we had such a moving and um, a great time connecting um, over prayer. And I just want to say that if you're feeling called to pray or lay hands upon someone, it's not a coincidence, and it's not um, out of nowhere. There's no such thing as random, because it's all a part of God's plan, whether we think so or not. And right now, um, like I said earlier, he's working, and he's doing a lot behind the scenes, things that we can't see right now. Um, so I just encourage you today to take a step out in a leap of faith to pray for those you're being called to pray for and don't let nervousness or your nerves or doubting take a hold of you. Just take a step and um, be obedient because being an obedient servant will make you a great leader. So, yeah. Thank you. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. So this is Angel. Yes. She was up here playing the keys for you this morning. She is going to, uh, she's also going to share a little bit about camp and a little bit about our life in between camp and this weekend and share a little bit about this weekend. It's going to be really good. All right, y'all. I didn't take notes that neat, so I'm going to try my best. <laughs> um, so at camp, like during the summer, a lot of stuff happened. The Lord set me free from a lot of things, and he like placed a lot of things in me and filled me up. And even though, like, after I left camp for, like, a short while, I was, like, filled up and stuff, over time, I kind of forgot. I feel like most of us kind of forget some things that the Lord does for you, even though it's still, like, in you, you know, you just kind of get caught up in your own life with so much stuff going on. So at Contend, I think it was a good reminder for me because it reminded me that there is a calling placed on my life and there's an anointing on my life and that... Um, wait, there's like a calling on all of y'all's lives too, and don't forget that, and like the Lord sees you right where you are, so you don't have to like be perfect to like try to step back into that and spending time with the Lord, like he meets you right where you are and knows exactly what you need and he takes care of everything, and this necklace I'm wearing, it has a V, like, and I always told myself it stands for victory. So whenever I was, like, jumping and praising and worshiping, I heard, like, in my head it was the Lord, but I thought it was my own thoughts. It was like, this stands for victory or something. And then the lady on the stage, she started talking about victory, like, a couple minutes after that. I was like, oh, that's you. <laughs> and um, there's a scripture. It's Deuteronomy 24. Let me see if I can find it. It talks about victory. It says, for the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies, and he will give you victory. And another thing she said was, like, don't just have the victory and leave it at the altar. Like, pick it up and carry it with you. So, like, whenever we leave, not only leave filled and, like, keep it for a little while and get back into our lives, but, like, continue to press in and surrender to him every day with an open heart, and he will meet you there and fill you up because we are carriers of him, of his presence, of his love, of his goodness, and we're supposed to tell other people 
So I showed up not really expecting a whole lot, like nothing in, well, I showed up expecting a lot, but nothing specific. And I received like what Mr. Clint said, like the love of God. I think it was Saturday morning. Uh, somebody was talking about like if you don't have an earthly father like around or something, he is your heavenly father and he's greater than any earthly father. And I received that and it was like his love and that's something else I experienced. And let me see what else I have written down. So yeah, he'll meet you right where you are and just go to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hey. You're wonderful. Thank you, Angel. Uh, that that's a, a big part of of what we strive to do is not leave it here to take it with you. You know, you get an hour of power on Sunday morning, but a lot of times on Monday morning, what are you doing with what you received on Sunday morning? By Wednesday, what have you done with what you received on Sunday? And uh, I know that's something that we really encourage them with. And I, I believe that they carry it. They carry it. Um, get Maddie. Yeah, come on, Maddie. And Malia. Malia. <clears throat> and there he is. I was like, where'd he go? There he is. Uh, so this is Maddie Sonia. Maddie has not uh, really been a part of our youth, not even a year, about six months. Uh, she was she didn't go to deeper youth camp, but she has been to contend before this weekend. In literally six months, God has completely wrecked her life, and, and the and the best way possible, y'all. In the best way possible, y'all. And uh, it's been amazing to watch. I'm I'm so thankful that I've got to see it, and uh, so we're gonna get to hear a little bit about that. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a little nervous, if I'm being honest. So bear with me. So um, I grew up in a Catholic school and Catholic church, so I've always known there was a God. I was baptized into the Catholic church as a baby. I continued making my sacraments as I grew up, and I had religion class. It was literally called religion class from pre-K to eighth grade, and that's how, that's where my understanding of God grew and it was in the Catholic Church's eyes of religion. And I didn't know how much more God was and how more there was than religion until he planted me and my dad here. So, um, <laughs> uh, he showed me his true self here through many things. And most of all, it's through the youth here and the people so like Winston said, I didn't go to camp in the summer. But when they came back and they did a service just like this, um, God really, that was one of the first times God really spoke to me through the youth. And if y'all were there, I was over here sitting in this chair right here, bawling my eyes out the whole time. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> Uh, so it was mainly because, <sighs> okay, what Noble said when he came up here to talk that once you give God your yes, you could care less about all the no's. <sighs> you could care less <laughs> about um, everything you're not supposed to do because of how much better God's love is than any earthly thing could ever be. Oh. Okay. So that's what really hit me. And I think I couldn't stop crying over there. Not right now. Because <laughs> inside of me, I felt like I wanted to give God my yes. I, there was something missing. There was something that all these other kids had because they just went to camp and I didn't have it because I had never experienced that before. Oh. 
And so content, when we had content here, that was the first time that I felt God's presence and the first time that I gave God my yes. And so, like I said earlier, I always knew religion. I grew up knowing religion, but now... I have a relationship with God. And Romans 4.13 says that God's promise to give us the whole earth was not based on an obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship. And so now that I'm here, I have a relationship with God, and I opened up my heart for him to work in. And... Today, I continue to give God my yes. And so, as I said earlier, the Contend Weekends really have impacted my relationship that I now have. And so this weekend, when we went to Houston for a Contend Weekend, I got my prayer language during the Friday night. Um. And all week I had been having like this vision that I was going to get my prayer language and then I was going to go tell my dad. And that's exactly what happened. So at the beginning of the, um, at at the beginning of the services, they always are like, come expecting. Like if you're not expecting something, start expecting it right now. And I was expecting, and I knew that the Lord was going to do that for me. So I'm just going to end on the fact that if you expect of the Lord and believe in him, it will be done unto you. Uh, so I, Maddie rode with me this weekend, y'all. I learned so many new words. And I, I learned this morning that I'm not allowed to use them. I've been using them all weekend, thought it was okay to use them, and then learned that what I was saying wasn't... Yeah, slime. <laughs> Don't know what it means. Sorry if it's something bad, y'all. Uh, no, I can't. I, I was told I wasn't allowed. I can say period. I can say period. <laughs> so I've learned a lot this weekend. I've learned a lot this weekend, but but... Watching Maddie grow and her just jump in head first has been amazing uh, to watch. And I want to encourage you uh, that exactly what's happened to her, if you're in here, and I don't care if you're 80 years old and you're like, I've never experienced that, you can. Like, you can. Uh, and, and maybe you're 10, you can. You can absolutely experience the love of God, the relationship with God that, that Maddie's growing and forming and experiencing. It's available to you too. You have, you have it. Um, and so this is Malia. And, yeah. Uh, Malia's also not quite been here a year. Uh, and I have just loved getting to watch her grow and her step up as a leader. And when, when I first met Malia, she was too scared to even talk to me and say like three words, much less come and talk in front of all of you. And so for her to be standing up here not even a year later, uh, it just is a testament to what we believe here, that we are connecting you, we are growing you, and we are developing you into a leader. And she is evidence of that just by being on this stage not even a year later. So I'm excited. I've heard uh, what she's going to share before, and it's going to be even more powerful right now than ever has been before. Good morning. Good morning. So... I'm kind of like with Maddie. I grew up in the Catholic Church. We had catechism every Wednesday. So me knowing what the Lord was kind of came from going to church and going to catechism through the Catholic's understanding. And I always knew who God was, but I was never able to have a real relationship with him. Most kids, whenever they go to church, they don't want to be there. They dread it. Not going to lie. I was the same way. Um, I did not want to be there. I would have rather had stayed home and not have to wake up early. But I love coming to church now, and I'm so glad that I can come over here, and I have the youth group, and I love them all, and they've just really given me the chance to grow in my faith and my religion, and I've had so many opportunities from this church that I would have never had if I never came over here. 
I started coming to the river a little over a year ago, and I met Winston shortly after, and he is one of the FCA leaders, and he invited me to go to camp. And this is an athlete's camp, and I struggled with knee injuries. And from these injuries, I was struggling with motivation from these injuries to do anything physical. Like, I run, and I did not want to run. I didn't want to go to this camp. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to have to run. It's going to be torture. I'm going to hurt so bad, and I didn't want to go there. But in my head, I knew God didn't give up on me. God didn't give up on himself. He didn't give up on y'all. He has not given up on a single person, and he never will. And so I knew that if he wasn't going to give up on me, I couldn't give up on myself. And I took this as a sign to just go to camp, and that was the best thing ever. I went to camp. I got saved. <laughs> I made so many amazing friends, and I made so many memories that I'm never going to forget. And every morning at this camp, we did Bible studies, and I've never done Bible studies up until this point, so I was like, how do I do this? But they had things in the back that like led you, and there was 31 of them, and I did them for 31 days every single morning after this camp, and I just like lived in my Bible. Like This camp changed me. I lived in my Bible. I read it. I did Bible studies. I knew who God was. I got saved. My life was going great. And I was like, I'm a new person. Like I can restart. And you don't even have to get saved to get, have like a chance to restart. You can restart now. You, today can be your chance to restart. And you can change your life. You can change the people around you's life. You, like, today could be the way that you change your eternal life. And so this camp just really gave me the opportunity to change my life. So this camp wasn't just a camp. It gave me more opportunities through FCA than just a camp. In August or September, I went to a leadership conference and our school had FCA, but we had a meeting and we went to Day of Champions and that was it. But this year, I'm a huddle leader. Emma's sitting over there and she goes to my school with me. She's a huddle leader. <laughs> And so now we have an actual FCA huddle. And it takes a lot of planning at our school, so probably once a month we have meetings, but we're growing and we have more people coming every week and we're just getting to share the good news of God with all of the people in our junior high and high school that are able to attend this meeting. And then last Sunday I spoke at Day of Champions in front of a bunch of other junior high and high schoolers who were there and I got to share what Jesus did for me at this camp, and it was amazing. But I found my happiness through all of this struggling through God. Most people find it through maybe drugs, alcohol, just their own way of coping. Maybe they go out and to parties, and that's just how they forget about things. But I found my happiness through God, through his word, through his love, through everything that he has to provide for all of us. That's where my happiness came from, and I've always been happy, but... Like, I feel happy. I can go out and I don't have to pretend to be happy. Like, I'm just genuinely happy. And it's changed me for the better. This weekend at Contend, I, like I said, I struggled with my knees. I had scoliosis. And the youth, like, we've all talked about it. They've all prayed over me. But this weekend, something that I did not expect, Tucker prayed over my knees. <laughs> He prayed over both of them, and I didn't tell anybody this, but whenever we got there, after sitting in the car for three and a half hours, probably three hours, my knees were hurting so bad. And I didn't want to do this because at these types of things, you're jumping around, you're having such a great time. And I still did it, but I wasn't going to say anything. But then after Tucker did this, Winston made me go on the stage because I had an altar call for healing. And whenever I stood up, I didn't hurt. Like, I... <laughs> I was no longer hurting, and I haven't hurt since, and this pain has been very um, constant and reoccurring, but after Tucker laid his hands on my knees and prayed for me and prayed over the pain that I was dealing with, I feel so much better, and then Alani prayed over my back, and I, my back has not been hurting since. <laughs> And I just got full body healing after going up for the altar call, thanks to Winston, because I didn't want to go. But he kind of pulled my arm up and dragged me up there. So, yeah. 
So yesterday we were up here after we got back and Winston asked us, what is one thing that really stuck out to you? And one thing that Pastor Matt said, I think he was praying over somebody, had my eyes shut, I don't really remember, but he said, you'll never receive it until you fix your heart. And these past couple of months, I've like veered off from God, but last night my heart was fixed and I'm keeping it that way. I don't want it to change. And after fixing my heart, I received the prayers that was prayed over me. And so the revelation out of all of this was that through this, I didn't give up on myself. God didn't give up on me. God doesn't give up on you. Today is your day to change your life. If that is what you want, you don't have to go to a contend week and you don't have to go to a camp. You don't have to come to church. You could be in your car. Pastor Matt said that he stood on the side of the road running around his car praising Jesus because God just told him that that was something that he needed to do and he did it. He listened to God. He didn't say, oh no, like I'll do it later. He did it right then and there. Next to a softball field with a tournament going on, he did it. And I knew that people could see him and they didn't know what he was doing, but he did it and he didn't care. <laughs> At camp, they taught us this verse, and I'm gonna end on this, but it was 1 Corinthians 10, 10 31, and it was, I just forgot, it. I've, been, I've been saying it in my head. Oh, it is? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And that has stuck with me ever since. Everything I do, I do it for the glory of God. If I'm running, I do it for God. If I'm coming to church, I do it for Him. If I'm at Content Weekend with my youth group, I do it for Him. If I'm singing in my room or in the shower or on my way home, I'm doing it for Him. No matter what I'm doing, it's for Him. And I would encourage all of you to do the same because God is amazing and He will work in so many ways that you can't even imagine. Woo! Hey, the confidence, baby. The anointing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Hey, uh, Noble's, he's going to be our last speaker, but I wanted to share something uh, off of what she said really fast um, about her healing and receiving that healing is that our victory is not just for a moment. Our victory is for a lifetime. You can live in the victory of Christ Jesus for a lifetime. It's not just for the weekend. It's not just for a service. It's for a lifetime. It's for a lifetime. If you are in Christ Jesus, you're in that victory. And uh, so, Malia, you're in that victory. You're in that victory. Halela, what, what, what did I say when he comes? What do we do? Can you do it? We did it on stage this weekend. What's one name? It's not your name. It's not my name. <laughs> Jesus! Hey! <laughs> yes, it's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. The victory is in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Halela. Uh, Noble, the stage is yours, buddy. Okay. All right. Um, last week, my dad taught on the cost of... Um, uh, what it costs to serve Jesus. So I want to go right there and pick up kind of where he left off. He said um, in Matthew 13, uh, 45, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. So right, he sold everything he had for that one great pearl, and which is Jesus. And it's exactly what Elijah did. He gave up everything he had. Uh, got out of the fields, took on the cloak of Elijah to go exceed all that he did. So I want to continue for verse 47. He said, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that is thrown into the water and caught every fish of its kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore and sat down and sorted the good fish into the crates, but threw away the bad ones. So I'm going to come back to that one. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. It's hell, right? Do you, and then Jesus said, do you understand these things? And they said, yes, we do. So I want to go back to verse uh, 48 when it says, the net was full and they dragged, up, dragged it up onto the shore, sat down and sorted the good fish from the bad fish. So the good fish is what I'm going to be talking about today. The good fish is like a tuna fish. The tuna fish, 
uh, you either have the tuna fish of the world or you have a bad fish, which is like an Asian carp. <laughs> Asian carp or tuna fish, you're one or the other. Um, so in order to be the tuna fish, you have to be truly, truly saved. In order to be the righteous fish or the tuna fish, you have to be truly, truly saved. And we say, well, Nob, what does it mean to be the truly saved righteous tuna fish? It means that someone, someone that doesn't say they're saved but lives like they're saved. It means that someone that is always obedient in everything they do and just consumed with, serving, with the serving mentality and wanting to increase the kingdom of God. Someone who lives out the call of God and doesn't just talk about it. Someone that lives by faith and not by sight. And someone that's always banging on the door of heaven saying, give me my bread. Uh, they also understand that the cost of following Jesus is great, but the cost is not is that not the cost of not following Him is much greater. They understand that you'll have to give up a lot to pursue God, but missing out on missing out on serving for God is much more. So, not to be saved, the unholy, I guess, not truly saved Asian carp. Um, I guess they just kind of have that mentality of my four and no more. They pray one prayer and leave, live the rest of their lives chasing money, women, popularity, success like the rich young ruler um, who made it, but when it was all said and done, he couldn't give it up uh, to follow Jesus. So I want to go there in Luke 18, 18. Today today okay um nope that's john <laughs> my bad okay still not there yet luke eighteen eighteen. uh once a religious leader asked jesus this question good teacher what should i do which the rich the religious leader is the rich young ruler he said good teacher what should i do to inherit eternal life why do you call me good jesus asked him why do you, he asked jesus why do you call me good and then jesus asked him only good is true only god is truly good but to answer your question you know the condom, condiments you must not commit adultery Commandments. <laughs> Con uh, woo. That's going to be on Instagram somewhere. <sighs> As I was saying, you know the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely, honor your father and mother. The man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. So he's a Christian. He's obeyed all the commandments. He's done everything he was supposed to do, really. And then Jesus said, he heard his answer and he said, there is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. So he didn't see what was really on the table. He didn't see what was at stake. He only saw his earthly things, but he didn't see what he could have had in heaven. He could have been a general commander in heaven, but instead he just settled and got comfortable. Um, he, could talk, he could talk the talk, but he couldn't walk a walk. And another example is Nicodemus, um, but I'm not gonna talk about it. So, uh, so I wanna ask you the question, what are you? Are you the Asian carp? Uh, are you the Asian carp? Are you the righteous tuna fish? Right? Um, I've been, <laughs> you know, people think they're slick, but they're not. Um, they're not. I often find myself being the Asian carp. Um, I'm having to cut people off because uh, they act around me one way, but. I find out who they really are and what they're really about. Um, I end up, uh, I just have to cut them off, you know. And every, every Friday and Saturday I'm at home, but I know uh, closing every day out so mad that the people, they treat me different and be fake. Just because of 
who my parents are, and that's, that's just the name of the game. People treat me differently, they act one way and then the other way. But that's just the name of the game. It's kind of what I signed up for. But eventually I act up, uh, I act just starting to act like them because I want to fit in. Um, but anyway, the point is that even though I may feel like this sometimes, I've got the ultimate friend that lives on the inside of me and no matter what, he's got my back and will always keep me in the right direction. And I'm always having to continually remind myself, like, what would have happened? What would have happened if Jesus said, I've had enough? I've had enough. You people, time and time again, betray my trust. You stab me in the back. And even if you say that I'm sorry and I won't do it again, how do I know you won't do it again? What if you would have done that? Because I know every person in this room has acted like that and felt like that and said something like that. But Jesus is the ultimate example, and he's the ultimate friend, so that's all I have. Thank you, Noel. Whew. That's good. That's good. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. Well, hey, um... I'm, I'm going to give everybody a little bit of recap for y'all that are parents that, that have kids and for y'all that maybe want to invite, like Clint said, a niece, a nephew, a grandkid, uh, a little recap on, on what we've been looking at this year from the youth and uh, maybe give a little bit of a challenge there towards the end and uh, we'll see where we end up. We're almost done. We're closing it out now. But just a little bit of our recap. We started off the year... Um, really focusing on how to live a life in faith over one of fear. Um, we, so we started off with uh, what we call just, are you prepared? And, and we looked at the tactics of the enemy in different ways that he attacks us and different ways that he tries to distract us and different ways that he tries to confuse us and knock us off course. And uh, we looked at how to prepare for those tactics and ultimately live a life in the victory that we already have over him. And uh, a common problem with the world is that we, we think that we're fighting for this victory, but the victory is already ours. Like We are fighting from victory. As, as children of God, we're in the victory already. And so we've really been focusing on trying to get our youth to understand that they're not fighting for this victory, that they already obtained that victory. It's already theirs. And how to live from that place. Um, and so that's how we kicked off the year. We then went into uh, studying a little bit on the concept of time and how we're u- utilizing it to live a life full of faith dominate it in the spirit rather than the flesh. Um, and so just come looking at the, the, we spend our whole life living a life dominated in the flesh. And it's not until we're born again that our spirit becomes alive. But even when that happens, we've spent so long living by the flesh that we, we have not quite learned how to take our flesh and submit it under the spirit. And so we looked at that. How are we, how are we spending our time? What, what, are, what are we looking at or who are we looking at? What are we or who are we listening to? Um, and who or what are we hanging out with? And all that takes up our time. So how are we spending our time? Where are we spending our time? Uh, we then took a deeper dive into how to live uh, in faith. You know, we, a lot of us, and I know myself in particular, we, we live a long time in fear and, and to the point that we don't realize that we're living in fear. We don't even realize it. And so we just looked at what's it like to, to change that and begin living in faith. And I'll give you the definition that, that I gave them. And the first one is of fear. Fear is the uncertainty of what we hope for. It is the doubt of what we have yet seen. And the definition of faith, which is in Hebrews 11.1, 1, is faith is the confidence or the reality of what we hope for. It is the assurance or the confidence of what we have yet to see. So that's Hebrews 11.1, 1, and you, you can live from either of those places. You can live in fear and constantly have uncertainty and constantly have doubt in what you hope for, or you can choose to live in faith and live in a place that you're confident, and you're confident and you have assurance in who you are in Christ that what you hope for will come to pass. Um, and so <clears throat> really focusing on just getting to a place that we recognize those fears, that we recognize how to step over fear into faith. Um, and so, really, I guess I, I have a question, and I'll have one of the pastors come up, Pastor Kevin will come up. Uh, but I, I just have a question, you know, and would I ask them, what are you afraid of? When, when you see the youth up here praising and they're, they're shouting for Jesus and they're raising your hands, what are you afraid of? What holds you back from praising that way? 
What, what are you afraid of? And, and I asked a couple of the questions. I asked a couple of questions. Are, are you afraid of, of actually being set free from what bonds you? Are, are you afraid of being set free from that? Or are you afraid that if you do do it, it won't happen? Are you afraid that, that if you do step out, if you do step up, that it's not going to happen for you? I promise you that's a question that everybody in this room has asked. I've asked it. But again, that's that stepping over fear into faith. You're not going to experience it until you step into it. You're not going to experience it until you step into it. So this morning, I just challenge you. I challenge you uh, to step over your fear into faith. And, and, and what's that look like? Well, this looks like well, maybe your breakthrough is on the other side of a shout of praise. But how would you ever know that if you've never shouted a shout of praise? Maybe your breakthrough is in the name of Jesus. But how would you know that if you've never called on the name of Jesus? Uh, maybe your breakthrough is right here at this altar, but how would you know your breakthrough is at this altar if you've never stepped up to the altar? So I encourage you. I know for a lot of our youth, as Allie put it well with Eden, is a lot of times your heart will start doing this and you'll know that God's doing something and you're feeling something and you're feeling that God's calling you to something and maybe it's to come to the altar, maybe it's to shout Jesus, maybe it's to raise your hands, but instead of letting that out, you smother it. And I want to encourage you that your breakthrough is on the other side of that fear. And God's given you the free will to decide whether you're going to step over that fear or let that fear dominate you. So I encourage you today, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're struggling with. Maybe it's you're in a place where you've gave up or you're struggling with maybe giving up. Uh, you're in a place where you need healing and you're not receiving that healing. Maybe you've never called on the name of Jesus and you're ready to call on the name of Jesus, wherever that is. I want to encourage you that it's going to take you stepping over fear to receive it. So uh, I'm going to pass to Pastor Kevin, and uh, I think we're going to have the youth come up as prayer warrior Pastor Liz. Thank you all for joining us with Youth Takeover. Hey, stay right here. Listen, we want, I want to give an invitation, just like he said. Um, if today's your day, you're supposed to come down. If you're feeling your heart beat like that, and maybe you've given your heart to Jesus before, maybe you haven't, maybe this is your first time to say yes to him, doesn't matter, today's your day. And we celebrate with you. So right now, I want to make an opportunity available to you. If that's you, if you're feeling that call and that tug, I'm going to ask you to, to come on up here. Don't wait. I'm going to have our prayer team. Go ahead and our prayer team come up as well. Prayer team, you can be on the sides right here. Yep. And we're going to pray for you. Also, if you're in this room and you say, I just need prayer, I've got some things on my heart that are heavy. Lots of these kids talked about how Jesus came and he gave light, he, he took their burden, he brought clarity, he brought healing into their life, he restored. If you would like for one of these young people to pray for you, would you please come up as well at this time? You don't even have to divulge everything that's going on, but man, God has moved in their life tremendously over this past weekend, not just this weekend, but months. He's been working and been moving. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we see this happening all over our nation. I really feel like the Lord's tugging on people's hearts. And he's not just tugging, he's always tugging. He's always wanting us. But there's a time right now where the body of Christ is pressing into him. So if that's you this morning, would you come up if you would like prayer this morning? Amen. Hey, everybody stand up on your feet. And uh, as my wife said, if you want prayer, if you'd like, uh, if you need prayer, if, uh, if you say, well, I don't really need prayer. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you just, the Lord will draw you, you know, kind of draw you down just because, I mean, I think sometimes he's got things for you you don't know about. And uh, he wants to make deposits. And sometimes the Lord knows that there's things in you that you don't know about that he wants to draw out of you. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, he knows. He's the great physician. And uh, a couple things I just want to, my few takeaways that I had from this morning is uh, we're in good hands. You know, the body in Christ is in good hands. And there's a whole parable that I was going to look at, but uh, Noble took up all my time preaching. So I ran out of time. But all, this, all these young people did so good and such a blessing. How many of y'all enjoyed hearing from them? How many of y'all know we're in good hands? Uh, I, I love that they all uh, are learning the word. I love watching them turn the, turn the leaves, turn the pages, and say in Romans and Hebrews and 1 Peter. And I, I love that. How many of y'all love that? I just love, I love watching them say, man... 
get given, given the word. And then I love them uh, learning to step out. And uh, all of us have sensed and deal with that. And some of you are dealing with it right now. It's like, should I go? Should I not go? Should I go? Uh, but, but then learning to just kind of take that step of faith, like Winston said. And uh, they're learning how uh, to be a vessel. And God said that in my house, there's lots of vessels. There's some for honor and there's some for dishonor. But uh, God wants to fill all of them. All of them have a use. All of them have a purpose. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to be at church. I'm glad to be at his house. I'm glad to watch these young people step out and uh, be used by the Lord. So I'm going to pray and close. And if anybody while I'm praying wants to make their way down, they're going to pray for you, bless you. And then the rest of you... Uh, you are going to be dismissed and y'all get to do it again. I hope all of you uh, had such a wonderful time. All of you, because I know in between service, you're going to be like, I wish I'd have said this. And I wish I'd have said that. Well, you get to make all the adjustments now that you want to say and do it all over again. Welcome to my world. Uh, it's like I get to make all the adjustments in between. Let me pray right now. God, we thank you for uh, uh, your presence. And, it, and you said, no man comes to the Father except I draw him. And God, we think that you're drawing these young people uh, to yourself, that you're drawing them, that you're filling them, that you're ministering to them, that you're leading them. And God, even us, that, that, that even now in this moment, those watching online or in this room, that, that you draw, that you uh, 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 bring us near, bring us close to you. God, we thank you for holy moments that we'll step out of this room and go back into uh, everything uh, outside of this place. But God, thank you that here and now that we're here, that your presence is here. It's tangible. God, that, that, to be at your house and listen to your word taught through these uh, young people. God, that it's a privilege to be here. God, that right now, so we don't, we don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. Times in your presence, times at your altar, times where we sense you, times that we see you moving. God, opportunities where you're wanting to make things that are unclear, clear. Some of you here, you say, man, I just don't, don't quite see a path forward. Things, things foggy, things unsure. I want you to know there's clarity in the room. Come on, God's got just the, just the right prescription to give you the right vision. The division's off and you can't quite see things kind of uh, going through life blind. But he's offering vision. He's offering sight. He didn't just offer sight uh, way back in Jesus' time that he's still offering perfect vision. Come on then. As you just say, hey, I just step out for perfect vision. I step out uh, uh, for understanding. As you move, any move that you make towards him, I, I guarantee you he's moving towards you. And when the prodigal made that decision, I'm coming home, the father immediately made that move and ran towards him. God, we thank you that these moments, that we just uh, sanctify them to you, that we move our heart. Come on, right where you are, just me, me, me even in my own heart. God, that I move my motives towards you. I move my desires towards you. God, create in me a clean heart that if I want possessions more than I want you, God, show me that I, I need a clean heart. God, if I'm wanting clout or recognition, if I'm wanting anything more than I want you, God, that I reaffirm, reaffirm my commitment. Say, man, I, I, I want you more than anything. Jesus, you are my first love. You're the only, the only one that could and, and did uh, give his life for me. And God, we thank you that you draw us to yourself. God, we thank you for your goodness, your love and kindness, your tender mercies. Let's make a confession of faith. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, you are my one, my all, my everything. Once more, I submit my whole self to thee. You are the light of the world and the light of my life. I consecrate again this day my life to you. You are the foundation that I build my life upon. I believe, I confess, Jesus Christ lived for me, died for me, arose for me, and became my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.